Yahuwah, Abba, Almighty Father, our Allah in heaven, with humble and repentant heart, we come before you, we become before thee to offer you praise and thanksgiving for your kindness and unfailing love. You sacrifice your son so we can fellowship with you through his death. Abba, we have washed our hands clean and purify our hearts. With all respect, we come before thee to give thanks and praise for thine unfailing love. From heaven above, we implore your loving Abba. We humbly ourselves, we humble ourselves before you. Please manifest yourself into our life and send us your Holy Spirit. Strengthen our faith and guide every one of us. Every day that goes by in our lives, we know we are getting closer to the day of our salvation. And we look forward to that day when we will see you face to face, when we will receive your loving embrace in heaven. How we long for that day. However, Abba, we know that while we are still here on earth, we must fight the good fight of faith. Let the fire of trials refine our faith, strengthen our zealousness to, to prevent us from becoming lukewarm or complacent. Please help us, Abba, to be strong in our faith and never forsake or disengage from our congregational worship service. Grant us the strength to be willing to sacrifice for our faith and never to be lazy. Instead, to always work hard, be patient in times of troubles, and pray while rejoicing in our confidence of hope, and continue to serve you enthusiastically. Please help us to endure until the end. We are longing for your presence in strengthen, to strengthen our hearts and trust. So when we receive your holy words, feed our faith, support us once again, and guide us by the light of the gospel of Christ. Open our eyes and minds so that we may see what is unseen. Our King Yahusha, thank you so much. We know that even now, you do not stop thinking of us. You always have something to teach us. We are ready and willing to learn from you. Since our baptism into your body, we always are, you always are with, with us. You are in our midst, in our hearts. You want to direct our steps for us to overcome so we may sit beside you one day and share in your glory. Thank you for your love and sacrifice and for being our chief shepherd and our high priest. Open our eyes with the light of your gospel, Lord. May you please accept our worship today. Increase our faith and help us overcome and realize that your punishment and discipline are because of your love for us. Protect us from all evil we encounter while walking on the path of righteousness. Yahuwah Abba, we beseech and pray to you, please bless our people throughout the world. Whatever we may be battling against, may you be by our side to give us the courage and strength to continue so that we may endure until the very end. Please bless and accept the offering of your people, including our livelihood. Please help us, Abba, 
that we may be able to thrive even in these dark and troublesome times. We believe, Abba, you have listened to our prayer, for we humbly ask and pray for everything in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahusha HaMashiach. Amen. Amen. Shabbat Shalom, my beloved brethren. Greetings and have a happy Sabbath day. Shalom and blessing to everyone here present. Praises are unto our almighty Yahuwah, our loving Abba and his beloved son, Yahusha Hamashiach for granting us this opportunity to gather here again. Today, we are supposed to commemorate this particular Sabbath day and continue to render worship to give glory to our Allahim Yahuwah and Yahusha. My beloved brethren, today's study will be the last to continue our series concerning the seven assemblies in Asia Minor in the first century, mentioned in the book of Revelations. Our previous study analyzed the letters written to the assembly of Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, and Philadelphia. We learned from our King Yahusha's message, messengers for each assembly Please take note of our study today. In our research concerning the messages that our King Yahusha had for the assemblies in the first century, we need to keep our eyes, ears, and hearts open so that we may benefit fully from the messages of our King Yahusha. Our King Yahusha wrote his letters for all assembly members of Yahusha, not just for those in ancient times. And today's topic is the last letter written by our King Yahusha to the assembly of Laodicea. Who was the assembly of Laodicea? The assembly of Laodicea was established in the apostolic age, the earliest period of Christianity. It was an ancient city in Asia Minor, now Turkey, on the river Lycus. Its location was on the long spur of a hill between the narrow valleys of the small rivers, Aesopus and Capris which discharged the waters into the Lycus, now situated near the modern city of Denizli. However, the assembly in Laodicea had grown lukewarm and useless. The word Lao means people, and Diseans means rulers. 
meaning rule of or ruled by the people and also represents the self-satisfied church. The people ruled the assembly. Their selfish focus on wealth and culture kept them from living in, on purpose in this life. But compassionate Yahusha offered them a second chance. Yahusha wanted a relationship with them again. And that relationship would put the assembly back on mission. Because who is supposed to rule over the assembly? Who is the head of the assembly? Yes, Yahusha is the head and ruler of the assembly and not the people. To start our lesson for today, our first question is, what was Yahusha Christ's message to the congregation of Laodicea? The answer is found in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 15 down to 16. And I quote, I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. So our question was, what was Yahusha Christ's message to the congregation of Laodicea? Because of their enthusiasm, their zeal, our King Yahusha Christ's message was a rebuke to the congregation of Laodicea. Our King Yahusha Christ rebuked them for their lack of enthusiasm. What did Yahusha Christ tell them? Yahusha Christ told them that he knew their deeds. And what did Yahusha Christ say about their deeds? Yahusha Christ said that he knew that they were neither cold nor hot, even though Yahusha wished that they were either one or the other. Instead, what was their spiritual condition? Their spiritual condition was that they were lukewarm. When you drink something lukewarm, it doesn't have a pleasant taste. So what did our King Yahusha decide to do with them because they were lukewarm? Our King Yahusha decided to spit them out of his mouth. The question is, what are the symptoms of lukewarm faith? The symptoms of lukewarm faith are indifference, forsaking our regular congregational worship service, disengage worship, no growth, hiding our faith, loving the world, and unwilling to sacrifice for the faith. How can we recognize those who have a zealous faith? The answer is found in the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 11 down to 12. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. How can we recognize those? who have a zealous faith? We can recognize those with zealous faith because they are not lazy. Those with a zealous faith, what are they known for? Those with a zealous faith are known as hard workers who serve the Lord enthusiastically. Their dedication is not lukewarm and they carry out their duties with love. How do they show their trust in our King Yahusha? 
They trust our King Yahusha by rejoicing in times of trouble. What do those who delight and rejoice in time of troubles possess? Those who delight and rejoice in times of trouble possess a zealous faith. Why were Laodiceans lukewarm in their faith? We find the answer in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 17. You say, I am rich, I have acquired wealth, and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. Why are Laodiceans lukewarm in their faith? The Laodiceans were lukewarm in their faith because they acquired wealth. And what was their belief because of their wealth? Because of their wealth, they believed that they did not need a thing. But what was the reality of their condition? Their condition in reality was that they were wretched, pitiful, blind, naked, and poor. Sometimes, when we are doing well on the outside, we cannot see our actual condition on the inside. We become complacent, complacent and fail to see that we are perishing on the inside. However, what should we do when we are in such a condition? We should allow our King Yahusha to examine us in such a condition. Often, how we see ourselves is not how Yahusha sees us. Who is an excellent example of someone materially rich, but perishing spiritually? We find the answer in the book of Luke chapter 12, verse 16 down to 21. And I quote, then Yahusha told them this parable. There was once a rich man who had land which bore good crops. He began to think to himself, I don't have a place to keep all my crops. What can I do? This is what I will do, he told himself. I will tear down my barns and build bigger, new, bigger ones where I will store the grain and all my other goods. Then I will say to myself, lucky man, you have all the good things you need for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and enjoy yourself. But God said to him, you fool, this very night you will have to give up your life. Then, who will get all these things you have kept for yourself? And Yahusha concluded, this is how it is with those who pile up riches for themselves, but are not rich in God's sight. So our question was, who is an excellent example of someone materially rich? but perishing spiritually? The rich man mentioned, mentioned it in this parable of our King Yahusha Christ is an excellent example of someone materially rich which, but spiritually perishing. How rich was this man? This man was so rich that he had to build bigger bonds to store all his possessions. But what did this rich man make the main focus of his life? This rich man makes taking life easy, eat, drink, and being merry, the main focus of his life. Today, people will call such a man 
successful. People you know are wealthy with enormous mansions, private jets, and Olympic-sized swimming pools. Even some spiritual leaders are having are living in affluence of riches while the members of their congregations suffer in poverty. But what did Yahuwah God call these successful and wealthy men? These successful and wealthy men are called by Yahuwah God a fool. Why are they called a fool? They are called a fool because besides all the wealth, they aren't aware that they are about to die. You can gain all the materials in the world and become the wealthiest man on earth. But this will not save you or keep you from death or the second death. You can be the wealthiest man on earth, but in the sight of Yahuwah or Allahim, you're not rich. However, what was the state of mind of most members of the assembly of Laodicea? The state of mind of most of the members of the assembly of Laodicea was like this rich man. They only thought about this life and becoming wealthy. For this reason, they became lukewarm in their services to Yahuwah, our God. What is the advice of our King Yahusha Christ? so that we can be wealthy. For the answer, we have to go to the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 18, where it is written, So I advise you to buy gold from me, gold that has been purified by fire. Then you will be rich. Also, buy white garments from me, so you will not be ashamed by your, naked, by, by your nakedness and ointment for your eyes, so you will be able to see. What is the advice of our King Yahusha Christ, so that we can be wealthy? Our King Yahusha Christ advises us how to be genuinely wealthy, to be rich, we must buy gold, white garments, and ointment for our eyes from him. And why must we buy ointment for our eyes? We must buy ointment for our eyes so that we will be able to see. Without the ointment, we are blind and can't see anything. But how can we buy white garments? We can buy white garments when we strengthen our faith and does good work on behalf of Yahusha. We must be engaged in doing good work because this represents the payment for the white garments we will receive. Our King Yahusha will cover our nakedness with white garments so we won't feel ashamed. And why? Should we buy gold from our King Yahusha and not the jewelry shop? We should buy gold. We should buy Yahusha's gold because his gold is pure by fire. The jewelry shop can sell you anything looking like gold. But what kind of gold are we buying? We are buying pure gold purified by fire. How can we buy pure gold from our King Yahusha Christ? The answer is found in the first book of Peter, chapter 1, verse 6 down to 7. So be truly glad there is wonderful joy ahead, even though the going is rough for a while down here. These trials 
are only to test your faith, to see whether or not it is strong and pure. It is being tested as a fire tests gold and purifies it. And your faith is far more precious to God than mere gold. So, if your faith remains strong, after being tried in the test tube of fiery trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day of his return. How can we buy pure gold from our King Yahusha Christ? We can buy pure gold from our King Yahusha Christ by remaining strong when experiencing fiery trials to test our faith. What must we feel when experiencing these fiery trials? When experiencing these fiery trials, we must be glad because trials are opportunities to obtain pure gold. How can we be glad while experiencing fiery trials? We can be glad by remaining strong in the faith, by continuing to do Yahuwah, our God's work. If we become lukewarm or complacent, the fire can ignite our faith. If we remain faithful during trials, we will be wealthy and receive much praise, glory and honor on the day of King Yahusha's return. So, no matter what happened, we must never let our faith grow cold or lukewarm. We must not develop indifference and forsake our congregational worship. It is never suitable to disengage from our worship. We must grow in our faith and never hide it. We must love our Elohim, Yahuwah, and King Yahusha, and sacrifice for our faith. Remember, the riches and gold of this world are the fool's gold. Only Yahusha can make us rich and provide us with pure gold. Thank you, my brethren, for listening to me. The remaining part of this lesson will be continued to be brought to you by our beloved brother. Thank you once again for listening. Shabbat Shalom, brothers and sisters in the faith. As we continue to study the seven assemblies of our King Yahushua, we are now at the tail end of our studies looking into the congregation or ecclesia there in Laodicea. Now, the sickness, quote unquote, spiritual sickness of Laodicea is also the sickness of modern human beings. And this is the tendency to become complacent, to become lukewarm in our faith. Because if we are to examine self, to examine people who begin new projects in the beginning, they start up very enthusiastically, right? However, something happens to their enthusiasm. It begins to wane until it finally dies out. And so we do not want this to happen to us. What we want is not only to uphold our faith, but to continue in our faith in a zealous way. In other words, we continue to grow in our burning desire to worship Yahuwah and Yahushua. And so the solution of our King Yahushua is to buy gold from him so that we can become truly rich. That's because a person's complacency begins with self-satisfaction. When he or she achieves some kind of worldly success, they begin to think in themselves, I don't need anyone or anything else. When they begin to think that way, they begin to become complacent, become lukewarm in their faith. And so our King Yahushua tells us we need to be rich, not in this world, but rich in the eyes of Yahuwah. So how can we do that? There are certain things our King Yahushua tells us to buy, right? 
so that we can be truly rich. We need to buy gold from Yahushua. We need to buy white garments from Yahushua. But also, there's something else he wants us to, to buy. What is that? The book of Revelation 3, verse 18. This passage was read a while ago. You notice we are advised to buy gold, to buy white garments. And one more thing. What does it say? The Bible says we need to buy ointment for our eyes so that we will be able to see. Yes, even though we have physical eyes that function well, and so we are not physically blind, there may be problems when it comes to the purpose of our eyes in seeing the things that matter the most in our life. This is why Yahushua wants us to buy ointment so that we will be able to see. Now, what is this ointment for our eyes that we need to buy? so that we will be able to truly see. Let's read the book of 2 Corinthians 4 and the verses 4. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. And so what is the ointment for our eyes that we need to purchase from our King Yahushua? It is the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. In other words, what the Apostle Paul is teaching us is that when we read the gospel, when we read the scriptures, it should lead into a transformation of the mind. You see, it's possible for one to have eyes that function physically, but if the mind is not transformed, if the mind is blinded, it doesn't matter what the physical eyes see. And so what should be the purpose of the Holy Scriptures? It is to transform our mind. Do you know how a person can be transformed in their minds as they read the gospel or as they read the Holy Scriptures when they discover Yahushua in Scripture? This is why when Yahushua was still on earth, he often said, you read the Scriptures. That's good. However, you need to realize that the Scriptures speak about me. In other words, the purpose of Scripture is to bring us into fellowship and in relationship with our King, Yahushua. It's only then that something happens in our mind. What is that? Our minds be begins to be transformed, and we begin to truly see the value and the importance of our King, Yahushua HaMashiach. And when this happens, when we begin to see the value of our King Yahushua, what shall become of our mindset? Let's read the book of 2 Corinthians 4, 16 to 18. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, for what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. What should we be able to see once our minds has been transformed by the light of the gospel, revealing our King Yahushua? Bible says we will be able to see what is presently unseen. And that's what we need so that we can be truly transformed. If you notice, Apostle Paul says that they were outwardly wasting away, but inwardly are being renewed day by day. You notice they're the exact opposite of the congregation of Laodicea. In Laodicea, what was happening to them outwardly? They were succeeding. They were becoming wealthy. Externally, they were doing so great. But inwardly they were suffering on the other hand those who were with apostle paul the early followers of our king yahushua what was happening to them outwardly they were wasting away and even though they were wasting away what was happening to them inwardly they were being renewed day by day well what's the difference between apostle paul and those who were in laodicea laodicea they were only able to see what the physical eyes can see. But the Apostle Paul, he was able to see something else. What is that? He was able to see what is unseen. 
This is what happens when Yahushua becomes primary in our life. We begin to see that there is something greater than what we can see here on earth. It is truly unfortunate that so many people today, they only live for what they can see. And then all of a sudden, when something happens to what they can see, when something happens with the circumstances in their life, they have a problem, maybe they lose their job, or maybe some kind of disappointment happens in their life. All of a sudden, their reality begins to fall apart. They begin to panic. They begin to stress out, and they become miserable. But look at what look, look at Apostle Paul. He went through so much, so much suffering and pain. Yet, despite all of that, he was still filled with joy. Why? Because he could see the invisible. What was the invisible that he could see? The reality of what is eternal. This is our fellowship with our King Yahushua, to be with him in the heavenly abode. And so, brothers and sisters, we need to always remember to buy gold from our King Yahushua, to put on the white garments, and also to continue to make sure that we and our minds are transformed, that we will long for that which is yet to be seen. And so because of this, what does our King Yahusha remind us concerning who he is? Let's read the book of Revelation, chapter 3 and the verses 14. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things, says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. We know that our King Yahusha, when he was giving a message to these various congregations, he often introduced himself or a certain aspect of himself, which would be the solution to their particular problem or situation. In this case, what did our King Yahusha say to them? He wants to remind them concerning who he is. Who is he, according to Yahusha himself? He says he is the beginning of the creation of God. In other words, all of creation was created for one purpose. What is that? It is for the mediation of our King, Yahushua. This is why when you read other passages of the Holy Scriptures, it says that all things were created for him and through him. And so before all things were created, who was in the mind of our father, Yahuwah? It was Yahushua. This is why he's also called the Logos. He's the, he's the central plan. This is why the Scriptures speak of him. And so if we want to fulfill the purpose of our creation, we need to begin at the beginning. Who is the beginning of all things? Yahushua. This is why, brothers and sisters, if we want to continue to grow in faith, we need to allow our King Yahushua to be the one who heads us. We need to allow our King Yahushua to lead our life. And this begins by allowing our King Yahushua to be inside our life. And that's the amazing truth that we need to grasp and realize. Yahushua, our king, does not simply want to lead us from the outside. He wants to lead us by getting into our life. And so when we begin to realize Yahushua is king of all, that he is the beginning of the creation of God, and we begin to grow and we begin to overcome complacency and indifference in our life. And so to summarize the commandments of our King Yahushua in his message to Laodicea, number one, do not be lukewarm in faith. We need to be zealous in our faith. Number two, do not be complacent in our faith. We need to continue to grow. Number three, be zealous in faith. Number four, let the fire of trials refine our faith so that our faith can become like pure gold. Number five, be rich in good works. Bible tells us we were called to be rich in good works. Number six, let the light of the gospel open our eyes and transform our minds. And number seven, let Yahushua, our king, in our life, that he may lead us, that we can grow in faith day by day. These are the commandments of our king Yahushua that we need to incorporate in our life so that we can become more and more like him. But what if, because of our stubbornness, 
because of our hard heartedness, we ignore this message of our King Yahushua. Because if you remember, the message of Yahushua began with him speaking to the congregation of Laodicea and say to them, I'm about to spit you out. I'm about to remove you from my mouth. Yahushua was not mincing words. And when you listen to this message of our King Yahushua, sometimes we become overwhelmed. Sometimes we begin to think of Yahushua as a tyrant, maybe, because he wants to spit us out. But brethren, if you listen closely to the message of our King Yahushua to Laodicea, it is a message of compassion. It is a message of love. Yes, Yahushua does not want us to be lukewarm. He wants us to be zealous in our faith. But if we're not yet there, it doesn't mean that Yahushua is giving up on us. This is why you notice what Yahushua told the congregation in Laodicea. He said to the Laodiceans, buy gold from me. Get rich because of me. The riches Yahushua was speaking about was not the riches of the world. Because that will pass. That will fade. That will become nothing. What our King Yahushua wants us to buy from him is real gold. It represents faith. It represents good works. It represents our mindset of thinking about eternity. This is what Yahushua wants. But sometimes as human beings, we still continue to fall, right? Sometimes we're unable to keep up with what Yahushua wants us to do. But Yahushua, he is so patient with us. And so what does our King Yahushua sometimes do? When we remain stubborn, when we don't listen to what our king instructs us to do. Let's read the book of Revelation 3, 19 to 22. I continually discipline and punish everyone I love. So I must punish you unless you turn from your indifference and become enthusiastic about the things of God. And so what does our king Yahushua sometimes do when we remain stubborn? When we don't do what our king wants us to do, Bible says he continuously disciplines and punishes. Brethren, it is the right of our king Yahushua to punish and to discipline. But the discipline and punishment of our king Yahushua is different from the punishment and discipline that we may have received in the past. Why? What is the purpose? Of our king in disciplining and punishing us. Bible says it's because of his love. And when we miss out that point, we become bitter. We become angry. And sometimes we may even quit the faith. But when we realize the discipline and punishment of our king Yahushua is because of his love. And we begin to grow. Do you know why our king Yahushua? from time to time, has to discipline and punish us. That's because he wants us to break through our complacency and our indifference and our lukewarmness in faith. He doesn't want us to stay the same. And this is why our King Yahushua is looking for ways so that we can be stirred up to action, so that we can grow in our faith. And so when we are being disciplined, what must we do? We need to repent. And we need to overcome the indifference and become enthusiastic about the things of our God. Brothers and sisters, how are we doing now when it comes to our worship? Are we engaged? Are we zealous in the things of God? Are we enthusiastic about the things of our Father? Because if not, then we need to repent and we need to change our ways. And when our King Yahushua begins to discipline and punish us, what must we do in response? Let's read the final passage of our studies today. I continually discipline and punish everyone I love. So I must punish you unless you turn from your indifference and become enthusiastic about the things of God. Look, I have been standing at the door. And I'm constantly knocking. If anyone hears me calling him and opens the door, I will come in and fellowship with him and he with me. 
I will let everyone who conquers sit beside me on my throne, just as I took my place with my father on his throne when I had conquered. Let those who can hear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Here we can sense the love of our King Yahushua. Perhaps initially, when we were reading the message of our King Yahushua to Laodicea, we may conclude and say, Yahushua is very, very bold in his statement. Because he says, I'm going to spit you out because of your lukewarmness. But here we see what Yahushua wants from those who are in Laodicea and from those who belong to the Ecclesia. What is that? He wants us to sit beside him on his throne. He wants us to be able to overcome so that we can be with him forevermore. Isn't this what we also want? You see, sometimes we forget what we truly want in our life. We become distracted by the things in this life. And we forget that everything in this life is going to fade away. It's going to come and go. And what will remain is where Yahusha is at. Brethren, he wants us to be with him for eternity. But for us to be able to sit with him for eternity, what must we allow to happen? We need to allow Yahusha to lead our life. This is why he also constantly knocks. And sometimes when he is knocking, we are unable to hear. Because when he knocks, we're distracted by so many things about this life. He's always knocking on the doors of our heart. The question is, are we able to listen to that knock? Are we able to respond to that knock? What response must we give our King Yahusha? We must open the door and allow our King Yahusha in our life. Yes, he is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He's the beginning and the end of the creation of God. But our King Yahusha wants to be in us because he wants to lead us. He knows it can be very difficult to, lead, to live life here on earth because Yahusha has tasted it all, the suffering, the harshness of reality, the difficulty of living on earth. He knows, he knows, and he knows we're human beings who are weak. That's why he wants to be in us. That's why he knocks so that he can strengthen us when we are weak and give us hope and comfort when we go through afflictions in life. Brethren, open our hearts to working Yahushua. Why not, before we pray together as a congregation, why not invite our King Yahusha into our hearts? Why not say to him, my King, my heart belongs to you. I want you to dwell therein. I want you to be with me. I want you to lead my life every step of the way. Brethren, if every step we take moving forward, is through the guidance and leadership and direction of our King Yahushua. We're going to break through lukewarmness. We're going to feel this desire and longing to be with him and to be with Abba. And when that happens, brethren, we're going to be filled with joy. The kind of joy that will never dissipate. The kind of joy that will lead to that day when we will sit with our King on his throne and to be with him forevermore but it begins with your heart open your heart to our king and let him lead your life that's his message to Laodicea that's his message to the seven assemblies simply we cannot live on our own we cannot survive on our own let our king Yahushua lead us and guide us all the way to the finish line let us stand and we shall pray together everlasting father most holy and gracious Abba, you are the creator of all things. And we acknowledge that everything has a purpose. Sometimes we are distracted from seeing that purpose. When you work, you think in terms of eternity. And so the things of eternity, they are sometimes beyond the reach of our minds. And we begin to focus only on what is seen. 
Father Yahuwah, transform our minds. Help us to long for the invisible because we know that is going to last forever. Heavenly Abba, Yahuwah Almighty, thank you for our calling and election. Every day, you are bringing us closer and closer to you because we know every day in each passing hour, the world becomes more and more difficult to live in. The world continues to fall apart. Wars and rumors of wars, disease, disasters in various places. Everything is happening, pointing to its final collapse. But Father, we know the end of the world is the beginning of your kingdom. And so we look forward to what you will do. Abba, Yahuwah, help us to open our eyes that we may see you working through history by prophecy that you have allowed to be written in your holy book. Our King Yahushua, that book is about you. You are the beginning and the end. Creation was for you. And so our King, who are we? That you will live in us. Who are we? That someone like you will dwell in our hearts. We are but human beings. Beset with many weaknesses. But we also know. Your love cannot be measured. You surrendered to the cross. To the will of Abba. Because you want to embrace us and to bring yourself in us. Oh, King, who are we that you will be in our hearts? Help us that we may hear the knock that you always seek to be in us, that we may open the door to you and you may dwell in our hearts. Our King Yahushua guide us. When sometimes we're overwhelmed with sadness, when sometimes we lose hope, we beseech you, Yahushua, Yahushua, our King, manifest yourself, embrace us once again, and guide every step that we will take. Father, thank you so much. We humble ourselves before you now. We ask you to remember your people. Help us when we worship you, that we will grow in our faith. And if there be those who are afflicted with any sickness, may we not go in despair. Instead, as we place our hope in you, heal your people. Strengthen us once again, that all the more we will continue to be zealous in our worship of you. We believe, Father, you have listened to our prayers. You have blessed your people today in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahushua HaMashiach. Amen. May Yahuwah Abba's unfailing love and tender mercies overshadow us. The memory and peace of Yahusha HaMashiach strengthen us. And the constant companionship of the Ruach Kodash be with all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Our brothers and sisters, please uh, listen to the following announcements. Uh, first of all, we will continue with our children's ministry. We had one last night for our Far East audience. And also we will have one today in just a couple of minutes. 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So those who have children, uh, we do hope that you will take the time and in, get your children involved with the children's ministry so that they can be acquainted with our faith, how we pray, and how we receive the words and commandments of our Father. And also, let's not forget that tonight, uh, 
Saturday at 10 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, which is U.S. time, California time to be specific, uh, we will be holding our sacred names. Uh, this is targeted towards our congregation there in the Philippines. And so it'll be, it will be done in Tagalog, which means in the Philippines, it will be on Sunday. Okay, so uh, Western audience, it will be Saturday, uh, but over there in the Philippines, it will be Sunday at 1 p.m. Manila time. We do hope that many of you will be able to support this work of introducing the sacred names, the name of the Father Yahuwah, and his, the name of his beloved son. That is all. May Yahuwah and Yahushua Hamashiach bless all of us.